Okay, let's try this again. Um, sorry about that. Uh, my, my stand broke there, so I had to do a little bit of adjustment here to, uh, to fix that up. And uh, I'll wait for some folks to join in, and uh, then we'll get started. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get going. Okay, so let's see here. See if that live is working, and it looks like we have some folks joining in. So uh, let's dive right into it. Let's get started. Um, I got a kind of a couple cool things to show you here. Uh, now it's sort of interesting. The first thing that I want to show you, and I've actually had questions about this. Um, first thing I wanted to show you was I wanted to show you this. Okay. And so if you look at this, obviously, what is this? So it's pretty obvious. It's a, it's a silhouette. Uh, this is a silhouette of James Monroe, probably around Circa 1800, somewhere around there. It's an unknown artist. And I wanted to show you this because, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of people are curious about, about silhouettes and, and what silhouettes are all about. Um, well, it's kind of interesting. A silhouette, the actual, the name silhouette actually comes from a specific person. Um, it actually comes from um, Etienne de Silhouette. Um, and he was a French uh, finance minister. Um, and in around 1759, during the, uh, during the Seven Years' War, or as uh, we call it in the Americas, uh, the French and Indian War, uh, during that time period, he actually um, instituted, because of economic problems, he actually instituted some restrictions and things, and things like that uh, to, uh, to help with the economy. And so his name, uh, Silhouette, sort of became synonymous or, or, you know, sort of became associated with uh, things that were uh, cheaply made <laughs> and sort of, you know, uh, so the things that, that weren't, you know, high quality or, or, or uh, the things that were simple and, and easily made. And so um, the term Silhouette for these outlines became associated with that eventually, um, uh, not, not right away, but eventually in, um, in, the, 18, in the 19th century. And so, uh, poor, poor uh, minister uh, Silo de Silhouette, uh, unfortunately his name got associated with things that, uh, to me, cheaply, but eventually became associated with the, the, the silhouette itself. And so that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and obviously, you know, when you think of a silhouette, uh, today the connotation is mostly things that are like, you know, either backlit, like they might have a light behind them or something like that. And so you see sort of the, the outline of the person. And, uh, and the same thing applies with these silhouettes that, that were made. And these were really popular, um, you know, especially uh, from the mid, uh, the, the mid um, 1700s all the way up through uh, the mid 1800s. And they were, they were a popular thing. And because uh, pretty much how you think, you know, because they were, they were fairly simple, simple to make. Um, they weren't, you know, you didn't have to go through the long uh, process of, uh, of, of sitting down for a painting. So it's like, okay, well, so what? Well, well, how are they made? What, how would they actually do these? You know, and it seems sort of self-explanatory, but there's actually several sort of interesting ways that they sort of went about it. Um, you know, one is that they could just simply, you know, an artist could just simply paint the outline, you know, by free hands onto either ivory slab or wood or, you know, canvas or something like that. That's one way that they can do it. Um, Another way that they can do it is, is, is to do a hollow image. And so what they could do is they could have a, um, a white piece of paper. So you have a, a, you know, say this is a white piece of paper. And then with the outline of the silhouette, you can cut into that and then lay that on top of the dark piece of paper. So, you know, either like, like a white piece of paper on black. And so that would create sort of the hollow image, um, sort of the outline of it. Um, and then sort of another way, uh, which was probably a, a fairly popular way to do it, was to actually cut it out itself out of black paper. And that was a, a very popular way to do it. Um, there was, and here, let me show you, let me hold this up again. And so there was a guy uh, named uh, uh, Gil Louise uh, Chrétien, and he invented a machine uh, called the Physiognotrace. Try saying that out loud. So Physiognotrace, he invented this machine called the Physiognotrace, and basically, <laughs> it's really interesting. So what it is, is the person would go in for the silhouette, okay? And they would sit, and they would sit in front of this sort of canvas thing. And there's a series of levers, and it's, it's this big contraption, and there's a series of levers and everything, where the, the person would out, and the artist would outline um, into a larger image. Because if you think about it, okay, if you shine a... Um, if you shine the, the candlelight onto your image onto the wall, well, that shadow is going to be fairly large. I mean, if you look at this, right, if you look at this, this silhouette, 
this is small, you know, I mean, that's, it, so the, the shadow that would be cast would be large, so that's kind of a problem, because, you know, usually you don't see these massive silhouettes, you know, on the wall, you know, it, they're usually small or miniature like that, so you have to have a way, to, it, it's a way to miniaturize them, and like I said before, a lot of artists would, would simply do it freehand, you know, they might, you know, traveling booths, you know, things like that, they might just do a freehand thing, but then this guy, uh, Creatine, invented this thing called the Physiogno Trace, and uh, the uh, so and, and that would have a series of levers which sort of reduced it in size, and you can actually do that in a sort of a almost like a mass manufactured way because if you trace that onto double pieces of paper, right, then you can cut out like four or five of those at once. So in a way, it's sort of like a mass manufacturing way of doing it, which is kind of interesting. Um, so here, let me show you this up again. So sort of an interesting tie uh, to the James Monroe Museum. It's sort of an interesting thing. Um, is that uh, Charles Wilson Peel, um, he was the father of Rembrandt Peel, and we have a couple wonderful Rembrandt Peel paintings here in the museum. So if you ever come down, come and check out the Rembrandt Peel paintings. But anyway, Charles Wilson Peel, um, he was friends with a guy named um, with uh, John Hawkins. And John Hawkins, uh, he was an Englishman, if I'm not mistaken. And he invented, I think it was around 1802, 1803, sort of a second physiogno trace. He wasn't the first guy to invent it, but he invented sort of a second version of it, and he patented that. And he got together with Charles Wilson Peel. Charles Wilson Peel actually had a, um, he actually had a, 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 a museum. Um, and so he uh, went with Charles Wilson Peel, and, and Charles Wilson Peel had that physiogno trace machine there, and it sort of created a, a kind of a cool marketing, almost like a rage in, a, in, the, in the U.S. Uh, uh, over silhouettes. And so it was an easy way to do it, you know, just to take a few minutes. And here you go. Um, if you want to try it at home, it's an easy thing to do. You can do it by freehand. There, if you want to see with the physiognograph in action, it's, it's really funny. If you want to see it, there's a wonderful video. Uh, just Google physiognograph trace and Google George Eastman. And if you put those two together and they Google, it'll turn up this video where they actually have this guy who's doing the tracing of it. And you can see that there's all these like levers and all this sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's kind of a cool, a cool, uh, cool throwback to the old days. And people can still do it now. It's sort of a fun project for you to do, um, at home. Um, so anyway. Uh, if uh, so, you ask yourself, okay, so you had the, the the silhouettes. What exactly, you know, was the downfall of the silhouette? Well, as you might imagine, the silhouette sort of went out of fashion because of our very good friend photography. Um, so photography sort of replaced that um, because photography was also a quick and easy way. Because you got to remember, these silhouettes, you know, you see these all the time back in the day because they were quick, they were easy, they were cheap to do, um, and they were, you know, more or less accurate unless the artist was being generous or something like that. Um, so, you know, it's sort of a, a kind of a cool thing to see a throwback to the past that still exists today and it could still be a fun project for you to do with your kids. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you real quick, and I'm going to grab this over here. If you'll just excuse me for one moment. Okay. I actually had this question as well. Um, so people were wondering, because I've been talking about ceramics, and so people were wondering, so, okay, you know, you see these porcelain dolls, okay? So this is a porcelain doll, similar to something that Mariah and Eliza might have played with uh, back in the day, okay? And I had, I had a question about these. and said, okay, well, you we see these, these porcelain dolls here. Um, you know, I'm talking about turning things on the wheel and, you know, these presidential china and things and, and how they would mold them and, and turn them on the wheel and, and raise them and everything. So, well, what about these, right? You can't exactly turn these on the wheel. So how were these made? Um, and so that was a question that I had. And, and the short answer is they would do these with molds. And what I'm talking about, and I actually brought one for you to look at, okay? Um, here is what I'm talking about. So with, let me uh, sort of just kind of brush this out a little bit here. Um, this mold here, if you see that, if you see this mold, this is, this is from my, my, my place. Um, what would they would do for, so you have the, the, the doll head, right? Okay. And they wouldn't actually hand craft each one of these by hand. Okay. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't actually do that. They wouldn't craft each one of these by hand. Um, they would actually do a master mold. Okay, and they would carve them in, and they would get sort of. The, so if you see that sort of, the, they sort of get the general outline of the shape. Obviously, this is a later one. Um, you know, this. Uh, you know, this is a. Uh, but this. Um, this. The the, the 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 concept is the same. So the porcelain mold 
Um, this would the concept would have been the same. Um, and uh, they once they got the master sort of mold there, they would uh, pour it out into a plaster of Paris type material. And then they would have the mold stuff and then it would release from there. And so what they would do is you see these indentations here. They would take the clay and they would slurry it up so that the clay wouldn't actually be hard when they would put it in this type of mold, okay? It would actually be sort of in a liquid form. And if I can sort of knock this here, you see it has sort of these little, these little indents here. And they sort of fit together like that, okay? And then you see the top of this. So you can imagine the doll's head would have been in here. And or, or the, the shape of the doll head would have been here. And then they would pour the, uh, they would pour the, the liquid clay into here. But what's cool about it is that this is kind of, I don't know, I think it's interesting. Um, it, what, what happens is, is the walls are porous, right? So the walls absorb the moisture. So what happens is, okay, so you have the inside of the mold. And the walls, as it's drying, it pulls in the clay and the liquid evaporates out, right? So it's pulling in, so you actually have the film. So the, the clay arts would know how long it would take to dry in order to, like, sort of pull into the wall and create that shape, that outline. And then they would wait till it dries a little bit and they would pop it out. And you would have the mold of the porcelain. So that, so answering, answering that question, um... That's how they would do that with these 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 molds. They they wouldn't do these on a wheel. They would uh, they would do these actually with molds. Um, and that applies to all different kinds of things. They could do that with teacups. And that's kind of how they do they do a lot of those ceramics nowadays. Um, you know, rather than do them on wheels and everything, they would actually they do a lot of them like the mass manufacturing teacups and stuff. They do them in molds, just like I showed you the plaster pairs. And the same thing would apply. Um, so anyway, uh, once again, let me show you this silhouette. A lot of people were asking me about the silhouettes, like what's what's the deal with those? Um, they, again, they became sort of popular uh, in the uh, mid uh, uh, 1700s up to the mid 1800s. Uh, they were cheap and easy way to get an image of yourself, and um, they could be done either by freehand. Um, they could do it that way. They could be done uh, painted onto a surface, or they can be done with a reverse hollow image, which is the the white outline. Um, and with a with a you know a darker or, or a black image on the or black paper on the inside, or they can just cut it simply out of the paper itself. And once again, uh, the wonderful machine. If, if there's a machine called a physio uh, physiogno trace, physiogno trace, that if you Google physiogno trace up <laughs> and um, George Eastman, uh, there's actually kind of a cool sort of image that comes up to show you how they actually would do that. So anyway. Um, Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, once again, if you can give this video a share, that would be wonderful. Um, and uh, I'm doing this every other week, so I'll be back uh, two weeks from now, and I'll show you some more cool stuff. So thank you so much for joining in. And um, if you can give our Facebook page a like, that would be, that'd be wonderful too. So uh, thank you so much. All right, bye now.